Hello YouTube and welcome to What The Math. In today's video we're going to be talking about chapter 14, subchapters volume and capacity. So this is the continuation of geometry chapter and basically this is the slightly more difficult part that is not very difficult if you know what we're going to be talking about and if you actually can use your formula sheet effectively. Let's actually start with something a little bit simpler that is the units that we'll be using in this chapter and specifically we're talking about the units of volume so here this is really the important part if you actually are asked to find something that involves unit conversion so in this case we're, we're going from centimeter cube to meter cube if you're asked to do this you need to remember that for volume just like for the area it's not just one to one so in other words once um one meter does not actually equal to 100 centimeters and when it comes to volume in this case you're actually need to remember you need to multiply 100 three times so in other words one cubic meter is going to equal to 100 times 100 times 100 or 1 million cubic centimeters 1 million cubic centimeters so this is kind of important so uh, when it comes to volume you need to basically do this three times for area it was twice and for volume it's three times and while we're talking about the units, let's actually take a look at the units of capacity as well. So what is capacity? Well, basically it's the term that refers to how much stuff can you fit inside a volume? So how much stuff can you put inside this little cube here so that it's actually filled with purple? So how much purple can we put in here? So for volume, um, we use this very specific unit and that's liters. And something that you need to try to remember because that's not given to you on um, in the formula sheet is that one liter is also same as thousand centimeter cube so it's actually their equivalent so one liter equals to a thousand centimeter cube but not to one cubic meter because remember remember this part one cubic meter is actually a million centimeter cube so here um one meter cube so if this is uh if we have like a, a box that's sort of like this basically a meter by meter by meter so we, if we if you get a delivery from someone and it's a one meter box this is one meter uh in every single dimension this box actually contains 1000 liters one kiloliter so this is actually 1000 liters inside that box which is pretty awesome when you think about it it's a it's a pretty big volume so there's 1000 liters inside the box and one centimeter cube is only one milliliter, so one milliliter. So one centimeter cube, which is actually the example we have here, this is this is equivalent to one milliliter, which is something you can see on things like syringes, for example. It always has milliliter cross section. So this is only one centimeter cube. All right, let's take a look at the formulas that were given in the formula sheet, and also uh, take a look at the examples that we need to be able to do. So this is the from your formula sheet. So this is from your formula sheet that you'll have on the test and this right here is from the book. So let's actually take a look at this and try to analyze it so we understand what's happening. So uh, starting with the bottom pictures here. So in the book we're given the volume for pyramids, cones and spheres. And what it says here is that the, to find the volume of a pyramid or a cone, what you have to do is basically, first you have to find the area of the base, which is, I'm going to make this purple. So basically this part right here and this part right here. So find the area of this first and then multiply this by the height, essentially the part between the top and the bottom. So multiply it by height. And then divide this by three. So there's also this part, which means that divide this by three. So for any pyramid or any uh, cone, and this is what we have in the formula sheet as well, except that it's written a little bit different. So volume of a pyramid is written similar. So here A is the area of the base and H is height. But the volume of a cone is actually written in pieces. So you need to understand what this means. So here pi r square refers to the area and h is of course the height and then one third is where you divide by three then we have the formula for a sphere and this is four third pi r cubed so this one is uh quite common as well you may actually see it quite a lot because this is basically a formula for uh, like a ball or something and here this is the actual formula in your formula sheet written exactly the same as in the book but the three additional formulas that you're given in uh, in the formula sheet that are not actually given to you in the book or not explained in the book is a cuboid. So what is a cuboid? This is basically, uh, you know, a cube. This It refers to 
something that might be a cube, might be a rectangular prism. Essentially, it has three different values. It has length, width, and height. And this is exactly what this means here. Length times width times height. So uh, usually it's referred to as rectangular prism. So this would be a rectangular prism. Then we have a cylinder and a cylinder is something that looks like this, basically a Coca-Cola can. So it's, it's a circle on top and then there's um, a tube-like structure and basically this is it. And here the volume for this is of course the area of the circle multiplied by the height, multiplied by the height of this can or the cylinder. So this is the area and this is the height. And the last one here, the prism is essentially very, very similar to a cuboid. It basically means you have a rectangle on the bottom and you know its area. And then there is a height somewhere over here. And what you need to do is you need to find the area of this prism. So this would be a prism as well. And essentially its area, which is this part right here, area, multiplied by the height which is right here so so you know what in a sense these two formulas are basically exactly the same so uh this is actually equivalent all right so let's take a look at one of the examples from the book so we can actually use all of this knowledge and try to solve a problem and the first problem we're going to do is example 15 and this one is a little bit tricky because it's not actually asking you to find the volume but it is giving you a volume and here we have a box with a square base and the height of 12. We also know that the volume of this box is 867 centimeters. You have to find the length of the base. So let's actually draw this first. We have a square base on the bottom. So this is a square but it's not actually a cube so it's a rectangular prism in a sense where you have something that looks like this. And we know that the height of this box is 12. So the height is 12, whereas the volume is 867. And of course, we're looking for this or this, and they're equal. These two will be equal because it's a square base. So this will be our X right here. This is X and this is X. What we know about the volume of a prism, if you look at the formula, is that it equals to the area here, so the purple area, the purple area here multiplied by the height. So it's area times height. Now we have the height, we don't have the area. So, and we do have the volume too. So basically let's rearrange this formula to make it A equals to V divided by H, or in this case, our area equals to 867 centimeter cube divided by height, which is 12 centimeters. And so this will give us 72.25 centimeters squared. Because it's an area. Now this is not over yet, right? Because this is just the area. To find the actual side, to find x, x equals to, it's the square root of the area because this is a square, right? This is the definition of a square. And so it essentially is square root of 72.25 equals to 8.5 centimeters. And this essentially is our final answer. So X here is 8.5 centimeters. Now, if you want some challenge on page 439, there's some really difficult problems. And actually, this is one of them right here. And this is actually problem 14H. Now, it, the problem itself does have some really tricky questions in there, such as, for example, finding density and the amount of grain that uh, this particular silo can contain. And this is, by the way, a silo where, you know, you store grain. Uh, now, here's what we're going to do. We're just going to find the volume of this. Oh, and by the way, in case you for forgot what density is, this is actually one of the units, but we're not going to touch on it because it's a very simple concept. Density refers to mass of something divided by volume of something. So basically how much mass can you store inside a certain volume? So this is what density refers to, but we're just going to find this part. We're just going to look at the volume of this particular silo. And so here, basically the structure is 3.3 meters tall, 1.6 meters uh, in diameter and 1.8 meters high over here in this part. Now there's three shapes in here, actually. I'm going to color code them just so they kind of make sense. 
there is a semisphere right here, which is going to be orange. And the volume of the semisphere, if you remember correctly, it's actually 4 thirds pi r cube. But because it's a semisphere, we need to divide this by 2. So this will this right here will change to 6. So it's actually divided by 6 because it's a semisphere. Um, then we have this Coca-Cola can or cylinder. And the volume of this is, of course, area times height. And finally, on the bottom, we have a cone right here. We actually have a cone, which is the volume for this is one third of pi r squared times height. So this is what we need to figure out. We need to basically combine all three. So let's see what we have, which of the values we already have and which ones we actually have to find. Let's start with the radius. Radius here is, of course, half of the diameter, which is this. So the radius will be 0.8 meters. So radius we have, this is something we have, which means that we can easily find the volume of the semisphere. Uh, then to find the cylinder, we need to rewrite this. This is actually, it should be, or can be written as pi r square, because it's the area of a circle times height. And once again, the radius here is known to us. We just found it. So it's the, here we have everything and the height is also given to us. Height is right here. So we should be able to find the cylinder as well. And lastly for the cone. So we do have the radius, but what is the height here? So what is this value right here? Now, this is where you have to kind of think logically. And by logically, I mean strategically or basically by using the picture that we have. So this whole height is 3.3 meters. This little piece right here is 1.8, which means that this plus this is the leftover. So essentially the green part here is 3.3 minus 1.8 or 1.5 meters. So this plus this will give us 1.5 meters. Now, when it comes to the semisphere, this is actually the radius. This right here, the height is actually the radius. So this is just our radius or um, this will be 0 0.8 meters. So we need to find the leftover part, which is right here. So what is this then? How do we find this? Well, basically it's 1.5, which we just found right here, 1.5 minus the radius of the sphere, which is 0.8. So this chunk right here is actually 0.7 meters. In other words, the height here, the, this height is 0 0.7 meters. And this is really the last value that we had to find. And we can now calculate the total volume of this entire shape. So let's start with the semisphere. Group them in numbers. So this will be one, two, and three. And to find number one, we basically just substitute the values. So volume equals to four divided by six times pi times 0.8 to the power of three, which will give us 1.07 cubic meters. The second part right here is the cylinder and the volume of that equals to pi times 0 0.8 squared times the height of the cylinder 361 cubic meters. And the last part is the cone and the volume of a cone equals to one third pi times point eight squared and then times point seven which is the height of the cylinder sorry not the cylinder the cone this equals to point four seven cubic meters and now we just add them up and the final 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 answer is approximately five fifteen cubic meters and that's that's the answer that's how you do these problems basically you break them down into little pieces Try to see what shapes we have there and then try to find the actual um, the actual answer. Now, one of the questions in, in this particular problem even will ask you to find density. And so in this case, you will need to look at the mass that's given to you and then divide it by the volume, which is right here to get either kilogram over meter cube or gram over meter cube. And basically that is it in a nutshell. This is how you do volumes and capacity and how you find uh, various volumes depending on the shape that's given to you. 
Hopefully this was clear and basically that is the end of chapter 14 as well. We're going to do a few more practice problems later, but overall this is it. Thank you for watching, please subscribe and good luck to you. Bye bye.